Tonight he is yours for free, a great man, and I'd like to ask you all to welcome Lord Roberts of Belgravia. Thank you. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour to be invited to address you this evening and thank you very much indeed, for Harry, for those, uh, those kind words. Um, I hope your mother has uh, forgiven us for the stag night. Um, the police have, I can't see why she shouldn't have, but none, that's one of those things. And there were no drownings after all. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to say a few words about Bill and what he has in common with Winston Churchill. He uh, said in his very modest speech that he didn't have anything in common with him, but that's not true. I've uh, delineated no fewer than six things, and I'd like to say a few words about all of them, and I'd very much like the people at the back table to shut up. The first is, needless to say, that they were both soldiers. I think this is very important. Winston Churchill, of course, fought in no fewer than five campaigns on four continents. And he went to Sandhurst, which is the British equivalent of uh, West Point, where Bill went. And Bill became a decorated Vietnam combat veteran. And, uh, and I think Winston Churchill would have been proud of Bill and his, military, um, and his military career. The second thing, as has already been mentioned by uh, Bill himself, is that he was uh, rejected by an ungrateful and short-sighted electorate. Ladies and gentlemen, Winston Churchill, no fewer than five occasions between 1899 and 1924, uh, lost parliamentary elections. And um, when Bill, in a four-way fight, got 21.2% uh, of the vote, that is actually, at the moment, better than a certain prime minister uh, that we have today. Even though, as I say, uh, it's a, uh, it, it, it was a hell of an achievement, actually, when one thinks a four-way fight, not bad. The third thing is the belief that both Churchill and Bill have in the practical application of history. And this is tremendously important. Neither of them uh, thought, uh, believe, that history is just something to do with ivory towers. It actually has a serious, daily, practical um, application. There was a young American lad who asked Winston Churchill on the day of the coronation, as he was walking across, as Churchill was walking across Westminster Hall, he said to him, uh, I, that he asked him essentially for some life advice, and it was on the day of the coronation. And Churchill said, study history. Study history, for therein lies all the secrets of statecraft. And that is why Bill is such a fantastic supporter of the American National Churchill Museum at Fulton. Uh, thousands of school children go there every year. You have the Westminster College students. You have the great speeches that have been given there by uh, Harry Truman and Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan and uh, George H.W. Bush and David Petraeus and Madeleine Albright and who else? Oh yes, me. Um, and it's also a first class museum in and of itself, the artifacts that they have and everything that uh, goes on there in the, uh, in the museum. It's really very something very special, as well of course as the Wren Church and the Berlin Wall. And the Berlin Wall is another thing that they have in common. It was Winston Churchill who said, as the Berlin Wall went up in 1961, he turned to his um, great uh, private secretary, John Colville, Sir John Colville, and he said, I will not live long enough to see this wall come down, but you will. 
Uh, he got it slightly wrong. Uh, Jock uh, died in 1985 and the Berlin Wall came down in 89. But nonetheless, it shows that he believed that that was not by any means something that was going to be accepted by uh, the civilized and the free uh, world. And so when, um, when Bill was there, and we've seen it on the, uh, on the show, when those MTV commercials and so on went out proving that capitalism was capable of delivering um, material benefits that co communism could only dream of, it actually proved that MTV had um, a central role, not in bringing down the, the Berlin Wall itself necessarily, but in ensuring that nothing like that was ever put up again. And that is really something that I think we all need to thank Bill for. There's a fifth thing, there's a fifth thing too, and that is the way in which uh, Churchill and Bill were always at the forefront of combating disease. It was in March 1944 that Churchill said, the discoveries of healing science must be the inheritance of all. That is clear. Disease must be attacked, whether it occurs in the poorest or the richest man or woman, simply on the ground, that is the enemy, and it must be attacked, just in the same way as the fire brigade will give its full assistance to the humblest cottage as well as to the most important mansion. And it was Bill who was the corporate world leader in the fight against HIV AIDS. It was he who appreciated that it was a combination of education and prevention and the uh, fight against stigma that was the key to destroying that monstrous disease. And this is something we need to thank this man for as well. And when it comes to disease, we must also think about, uh, about COVID, the importance of immunization, the fact that since the 18th century we've understood, and the Enlightenment, we've understood the importance of uh, immunization. But in our basically benighted and modern post-enlightenment age. We seem to need to be reminded of that. And so Bill is also right now in the forefront of the war against ignorance with regard to science. And he needs to be congratulated for that too. <clears throat> Something else, uh, something else, of course, that uh, unites him with Winston Churchill is that Winston Churchill was fortunate enough to have in Clementine a wonderful wife, somebody who stood by him in the really difficult and dark days. She was sometimes the only person who truly believed in him. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Some of the letters that Clementine wrote to... Uh, the two prime ministers who sacked Churchill and to other politicians uh, sh just show such a wonderful total belief, um, the kind of thing that, uh, that any man, that every man would be uh, immensely proud to have in a wife. And that is also what uh, Bill has in Alex. And that's another aspect, I think, that is matters at all. Now... Lauded, <laughs> Bill has been lauded. I was this morning just trying to add up the number of prizes and awards that he's had from the United Nations, from the White House, from his own industry, of course, and other industries, from the US Army. Uh, they, they come thick and fast, these major uh, awards. I would read them out, but unfortunately, um, it, would, uh, it would make all of us feel like massive underachievers. Um, and so, uh, so I'm not uh, going to. Plus, it was, by the end of it, it was slightly irritating, frankly, uh, to see quite how often you've been. But this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a special award. I really do believe that. I think it's something that is uh, the leadership award from, uh, from Westminster College is, is something you only have to look at the people who've, who've won it in the past to appreciate that we're not just here on some kind of gigantic ego trip. This is a really serious and significant moment both for Westminster College uh, and, of course, for Bill. Because there's something to do with the philosophy of Winston Churchill, the political philosophy, but also the moral philosophy of him. 
He was driven by the concept of noblesse oblige. He got this from um, Disraeli, of course, his uh, political, ultimate political uh, hero and mentor, also from Edmund Burke. He got it from the medieval concept of what um, knightly chivalry uh, consisted of, what it was all about. And in this fantastic medieval hall, of course, um, that doesn't sound atavistic. He got it what he called the religion of healthy-mindedness from the Judeo-Christian ethics that uh, have lasted 3,000 years. And um, in the Judeo sense, a thousand, uh, two thousand years in the Christian sense, together, when you put these things together and you add in what in Churchill's case was the aristocratic belief um, that it is the profound duty of successful and wealthy people to protect through military service and also through, through philanthropy um, those less fortunate than themselves you appreciate that that is essentially what the life of Bill Rohde has been all about. It's the golden thread, ladies and gentlemen, that goes through Churchill's political philosophy, and it also characterizes the life of Bill Rohde. And for this, we honor him. Thank you very much.